Right, hello everyone and welcome to Shark Podcast. I'm your host Ross Baxter and today is episode 41 of the series. And today we've got an awesome guest for you. We've got James Ward on the show. Um, he's an environment artist. How you doing, man? Thanks for coming on. I'm not too bad. Cheers. Cheers for having us. That's okay. Anytime. Uh, really looking forward to this. Um, if you guys are new to the podcast, uh, the podcast is a weekly series where I bring on guests from the games and film industry. Um, it is live on nine other platforms, so it's not just on YouTube. Uh, we're on uh, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it. The, the, the podcast is out there. Uh, it's on everything. So if you guys want to check out uh, when it is uploaded, check out in the comment section, uh, in the description, sorry, down below. Uh, if you're listening on YouTube, uh, please subscribe. That'll be much appreciated. But with all that said, let's get into the podcast. So um, as always, man, we always start off with like the basic introductions and so forth. Just so, just tell us a wee bit about yourself and uh, who you are and uh, what you do. Uh, I'm James, <laughs> obviously. Um, I'm a recent graduate from Staffordshire University in Stoke-on-Trent um, in England. Uh, I live in Derby. Was born and raised here uh, in the East Midlands, and I got into 3D about five years ago something like that Mm -hmm. um i got into it a little bit later than most people do okay so i'm 24 and 25 this year um i had a bit of a career change (laughs) from what i was doing before no that's awesome um i used to do hairdressing okay oh nice one right uh and then just kind of that it just wasn't fun <laughs> I just hated it um, that came to an end and then I saw uh, it was like a advertisement brochure for Staffordshire University okay uh, for, the, for the games course and uh, ever since that like I, went, I took myself back to college I went through uni like four of my five choices for university <laughs> were the games courses at Staffs <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so uh I think fairly early on, <laughs> I was kind of like, no, I'm going to staff. You're, you're, um, you're definitely good to staff at you. <laughs> yeah, although saying that, they actually put me on the wrong course. Right, um, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> when I first joined in the first week, I was like, this isn't what I applied for. <laughs> Something completely different. It was it because, was uh, if I remember rightly, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think... Stafford University has the most games courses for a university in the UK. Oh, right, okay, wow, awesome. Yeah, um, it's supposed to be like uh, like the best one to go to if you want to do games, just because of um, what's taught, the lecturers, the resources, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and from my experience of it, it was pretty decent as well. Right. <laughs> so, um, That's great. Yeah. Like when it comes to no, that's that's awesome. Thank th- thanks for saying all that because uh, like uh, like this is the cool thing about today's podcast. So um, I've done one uh, one of them before. So I was actually saying it to James before we even started. Was uh, so the podcast is um, it's all about like the, the whole story aspect, and um, it doesn't matter whether you've just graduated. It doesn't matter where you are where, when it comes to your art. Um, it's just all about like the whole sort of the journey and uh, like all the do's and don'ts and the fact that you've just graduated. Um, like that's really cool and then like like you said you had a a career ambition change and uh, oh yeah like no but that's awesome like the fact that you, <laughs> I, I, I understand that um, like so obviously you had to go through that sort of um, that change to know where you wanted to go and mm. um, the the only way you can find that out is through um, like doing it so you wanted to do the the hairdressing to see uh, what it was like and because uh, one of my friends uh, from uh, secondary school so he went into um hairdressing he's still doing it and uh he's been doing it for what like five years five six five, no seven years now and um until you until you actually try it it's the only way you actually know and it applies to everything in life so uh no that's that's super cool because that's something different and um it, uh, the fact that obviously like you went to staffordshire like so obviously like i'm still new to the aspect of uh like i don't know what every university is like obviously like everyone's everyone's different like so i went to like a great university and i was really blessed uh back here in scotland and um no but it's, it's super good right? uh, pardon was it abbot abbotsworth or um, uh, Aberty. 
That's how you pronounce it. That's Aberté. It. So it's uh, uh, if everyone's have you not heard of Aberté? It's like uh, it's in uh, it's in Dundee in Scotland. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to the podcast, the podcast is obviously about uh, student education, and I kind of like base things around like the same sort of four main kind of questions. But uh, like starting off things, is there anything? Like obviously you're, you're saying that you got taught like a lot of awesome things, and uh, I realized that in your portfolio, like, your portfolio is an awesome example for um, just like how much you've learned, and you can tell like there's a lot of things that I wish I like. Um, so from your portfolio, I wish I did a lot of things that you did because I think you did things very. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of what you were taught, but you did things very smart, and I think. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, I'm not, you'll, you'll, you'll probably disagree with me. Like, oh my gosh, it was crazy and all like, all this stuff. But um, speaking of like just university, is there anything you wish you, uh, you learned? Is there anything kind of ring uh, ring like like come to mind and so forth? Um, not off the top of my head. Like I always, the way I always worked was, I picked and designed my. Um, my assignments to learn different things. So, for okay. example, like, oh man, I was like the bane of a couple of my lecturers because um, <laughs> in second year, actually, I had a lecturer called Mike Woods. Okay. And I love him to bits. He's brilliant. Um, he he taught us a module called environment modeling. Environment modeling. Okay. Uh, so. This was second year, so first semester, so September to December, we learned uh, trim sheets mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So we learned that very early on, and that like changed the way that I worked. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from that, I actually did the Mass Effect environment. Yep, awesome. Earlier. Um, and then in second semester, so that was January to April. Uh, in those 12 weeks, we did organic, so that's why I first kind of started looking at foliage and, and stuff like that, but I, re- <laughs> I very distinctly remember um, the assignment brief for the second semester was like, it was create a diorama mm-hmm. uh, environment piece, and I was like, nah, you know what? I don't like that word diorama. Okay. <laughs> so I ended up making like a a whole canyon. Uh like a, it was based on Dragon Age. It's okay. Big bio, I'm a big, big bioware fan, it's like nice, nice. And um if you're, from, so yeah. if, you're, if you're from Bioware, keep listening. <laughs> <laughs> In it. Um So I ended up making a Canyon based on the Trespasser DLC from Inquisition, and this was my first time doing foliage. And I think, like, from that one project, I learned how to do lots and stuff like that. And that was like kind of what I wanted to learn from that. Was this it away. was this your second year, or like what year was this? This was year two. Year that like that's mental because like like this is the, this is the thing that I so when I was like saying to the point earlier like. You guys, you guys learnt the pipeline, and I can't highlight how crucial that phrase is. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so, like I, like I, um, like I say it every time. Like I love the university I went to. However, I wouldn't. I would have to say that I learnt the pipeline through self-learning. And oh, that too. Yeah. Like, yeah. like obviously it plays a big part, but. Like for example, when you speak of uh, trim sheets and stuff, I mm. had no idea how to do trim sheets. <laughs> like uh, not like <laughs> not even a Scooby. And uh, it was from Tim Simpson that I learned how to do trim sheets, or, or at least yeah. learned like the fundamentals to start off with. And uh, that was a really good video, actually. Well, well, that's the thing. It's like uh, like obviously uh, carry on what you were saying and stuff like that. Like that's awesome. Like uh, so uh, you were saying obviously like, like that that project was like I, I guess like the main kind of one in terms of like your learning sort of like escalating um the trim sheet one was for sure um so i'd actually only started in three so originally i wanted to be a narrative designer um for games because i enjoy writing mm-hmm. uh, it's a nice little hobby uh i've enjoyed it for a couple of years and um 
I wanted to be a narrative designer and, and get into the industry that way. But when I first started uni, uh, one of my modules was called Intro to 3D. Okay. And it, and it was a compulsory module. Like you, you had to do it if you're on the games design course. And I remember in in that year in particular, like that module and a couple of the guys that I met at uni, I, just, I fell in love with 3D. Um, right. it's, it's gotten to the point now where like, I'm walking down the street and I'm like, mm, that's a bad decal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm exactly the same. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so happy you said that. I'm not alone. <laughs> like, I, walk, I walk past the building and I'm like, mm, that's a trim sheet. <laughs> Or it's like, how many polygons would that wall be? <laughs> or like, yeah, what, yeah. I was like, how would I sculpt that? Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm not alone. It's so good. <laughs> like, I, I used to drive one of my mates uh, at uni. He's called Ben Thompson. He's a he's an animator. Okay. Absolutely fantastic dude. And um, I <laughs> I used to really piss him off. <laughs> um, so I've I live in I've lived in Derby the entire university experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stoke on Trent is about forty miles away, so I always drove to and from. It's okay. about forty minutes. And uh, in the winter, it would get quite foggy, so I'd pull up on my drive and I'd take a picture of my headlights in, in like the fog, right. and I'd send send it to Ben. And I'd be like, mm, "That volumetric." <laughs> and uh, awesome. Oh man, <laughs> I got some shit. You need the next day after that. <laughs> so you, I, I, I did it for like twice a day easily for about four weeks and it never got any less funny yeah no it's like it's, it's always these small things like it's like it, that, that's like i almost you said that because it's always about like the passion and uh like obviously drive safe uh, oh yeah <laughs> drive safe that's the priority number one everyone listening that's the main aspect of this discussion <laughs> make sure you're, you're driving smart but um when it comes to like passion it's like like it doesn't matter like I, i'm i'm really happy you said that because it's all about like just just going after it being you and uh like like i said so like me and my best friend gar uh gar when i was in first year so uh like you, you could always tell like who was the most passionate so like so when we uh like so i was in aberdeen aberdeen at the time and it was the first time that like i was new to 3d and stuff but i was so like i was so ready for it if you know what i mean and yeah. it like Everyone else was obviously kind of. It kind of felt like a lot of other people in the class were kind of like just going through the motions. Whereas me and him, we're, we're walking past the street. We're like, oh my god, there's some polygons over there. Like we we were just going full on geek mode. It was brilliant. Like, like he was always talking about robots and stuff, and I was like, dude, this is like, this is my friend. This is like this is a friend for life. <laughs> and yeah. It was just yeah. like that's the that's the environment like you want to be surrounded by like the people that are just exactly like you, and. Uh, like speaking of obviously education and stuff, like what would you say are the the benefits of going to university? Like obviously like the common ones is like the friend aspect and stuff. But is there like anything else that kind of stood out uh, to you? Like maybe for your university in particular. Um. So my uni is quite lucky in the sense that, like, I think it's like ninety percent of the games lecturers are ex industry and pretty recent as well. Mm-hmm. Um. So I've, I've I've got one lecturer. Um, it's called Elliot, and he worked at Sony right before uh, joining us. It's called Elliot McSherry, and he's a wicked wicked 3D artist. And he taught. He's actually responsible for a lot of the stuff that I know. But he only he only joined about a year ago, and in that that year he's like, transformed like, everything that I thought I know about 3D. What's what's his name again? Sorry. Um... Uh, Elliot McSherry. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, awesome dude. Shout out to um, him. <laughs> yeah, um, like people like Mike Woods, um, Gareth Codlin, lo- like just loads of people, mm-hmm. um, and just being able to go back and forth between them, send them work. Um, get feedback that kind of thing but like for me the most important thing was structure okay so i'm really <laughs> I'm, I'm really bad if i don't have like a structure so if i'm not getting up and going to uni and working or something like that then i 
I struggle to sit down and, okay. and do my work. Um, so for me, if I just did online courses, I don't think I'd be where I am now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm I'm big into you know just like I'd say go to uni, but don't think that you can just go to uni. Like you're gonna have to teach yourself. You're gonna have to do online courses as well and just mm -hmm. like there's so many resources out there yeah that like if you're not using them you're a bit of an idiot yeah um no, that's just be good. just because there's, there's so many people that want to do this that like it's all it, it's all well and good like you know being mates and and stuff like that but what got drilled into us pretty early on I think this was like week one or week two mm -hmm. in, my, in my first year but my lecturer looked at us all and went look at the person next to you they're going to be uh, your competition when it comes to getting a job and it's not just them like you've got people in industry already you've got other universities you've got previous graduates you've got master's students you've got mm -hmm. PhD students all of that and they're all wanting that same job yeah um, that's awesome. Like, yeah, cause you, you said you nuts. said you said so many like really great points. Like that, like that's the best thing about the fact that, like the fact that you've literally just graduated. Like, congrats, congrats once again. By the way, that that's that's awesome, and uh, I wish you all the best with it. Uh, just, just keep working on the on the craft, and uh, everyone who's tuning in, make sure to check out his work. By the way, so. Uh, um, we've just reached out um, over just about four and a half thousand listeners, so all of you go treat the man some, uh, with some Holy love. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> give him a follow, all of you, uh, make sure to check it out. Um, you'll see all his links um, highlighted on the screen, literally right now as we're uh, listening in, so go and respect the guy's work. and um, uh, like There's so many different things uh, that we can take from him, uh, like he's just said. and. Like that's the awesome thing because like, you you nailed it like it, that's like, like that's what I just said like you you said so many awesome points there like like I understand that like obviously like you go to university and you want to have fun and stuff but I think like your university did it a great way so it just instantly telling the reality uh, like I understand like obviously you want to enjoy it and um, have fun and so forth but mm. at the end of the day you want to get something out of it, out of it if you know what I mean like the, um. You've you've invested the money and time because I understand in England you've paid for your fees as well. Like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's because <laughs> it's, 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 it's a lot more than what well, because in Scotland we're lucky we got the free side of things for certain aspects, whereas for you it's different. I was going to go to your uni as well. I think that was or, one of the ones I was considering. Oh, awesome. Like, I guess like the hard thing obviously about that sort of thing. Like I understand that a lot of people um, do actually like. Um, like change country and stuff, and uh, like that's a, if you if you have that as an opportunity, then go for it. But um, like you said, you have a like you have a really good university, so um, you took advantage. Of it. I think you you made a really smart decision. But um, like speak, speaking on some of the points that you that you brought up there, um, like it's crucial because like when it comes to like I understand. So this this is where I when it comes to like that sort of thing about like comparing yourself, so or like the competition and stuff. So, this is the thing. So when I when I was at uni, I had so I always I've always been one of those people that I'm just naturally a very competitive person. Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, like I <laughs> <laughs> like I like I understand. So this is this this was a great learning curve for me. So it was very important for me to go through this phase because um, I've said to many people before. So my whole childhood was sport, and but the best learning thing I did was learning how to work together. And like I understand that obviously people are your competition uh, in the sense that like obviously that uh, you you nailed it um, in the sense that so you got the people in the industry that you're going up against as in trying to get a job so you've got your fellow classmates so there's a lot of things that come into play and like you said obviously like it's the things that you do outside of the modules that gives you that edge so like learning something new a a, a new te a new technique like there's all these small different things that go such a long way. And like, like that, that's super important. And when it comes to, um, so if you're tuning into the podcast, think about the small things. So a lot of people always think about the big picture, and I get it. Like if you have like a career ambition, like, um, like what what was the studio that you said that uh, that you is it Bioware? 
fly away. Yeah. yeah, so like that's an awesome goal to to aim for. Uh, but the, uh, for example, like I have like um, a few studios in mind that um, like so there's a studio that I'm waiting for a response for like and that's one of my dream companies. I can't say anything just yet, but we'll see yeah, what yeah. happens. Um, and then like one of my other dream company is uh, everyone hears it all the time is Weta Digital. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, if I ever get a chance to move new to New, new Zealand, I am literally flying on the plane. I am never looking back. I am taking a runner. I am going to immigrate over there, and uh, it's all about. Um, being realistic as well like there's a balance between the two and yeah, sure. being smart with your, your decisions um, no but you, you also made a, a, a really good point and it's the first one like, I haven't really gone into depth about it on the podcast Is uh, so you said about um, like the collaboration aspect um, with your teachers yeah. and um, so this is this is a big thing <coughs> and I, I'm not sure what it was like at university but like, did you have like like, I understand it's hard for university, but, like, do you guys have, like, a lot of time with your lectures? So, uh, it depended on the class. So, for, take my second year, for example. Um, I had four modules. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all ran alongside one another. Okay. Because we, we only did two semesters in the, in the second year. So, like, April to September, we were off. Um, but I had environment modeling, I had character modeling, hard surface modeling, and I had a collaborative project called a uh, junior senior, which was supposed to fill the gap of like industry experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you were a second year, you were a junior, if you were a third year, then you were a senior and you basically work for the seniors and you create a game. Right. In, X amount of time. Uh, so, and like this was like a multidisciplinary team as well. This wasn't just art. This was like the programmers, uh, the animators. You had people that specialized just in texturing or just in modeling or whatever. Um, but for the most part, I got to pick all my modules. Mm-hmm. And on average, each of those lectures was two hours oh, wow, I was right. in I was in like uh, which is like a step down from like the first year where like intro to 3D was three hours long mm-hmm. um, and then like intro to 3D engines was three hours as well that was a really long Monday um, but then you know like you go from that to second year where it's like an hour less but like all the information is a lot more condensed and it's you know it's a lot more like is this is this is this, yeah, is yeah. this. and then like in, in third year it was like the same kind of time as second year but like it was a lot more brief it was a lot more like to the point even like it was just trimmed down and so much of it was supposed to be like you go away and then like you do extra work on top of that like that was expected all the way through but mm. more so second half of second year and definitely third year yeah uh, considering that one of our modules was the final year project which was the throne room project for me mm-hmm. um and we were assigned a final year project lecturer so we were mentored by a specific lecturer and then that's who would mark your work and that's who you would go to for feedback and stuff like that. That didn't stop you from like going to other like, other lecturers and getting feedback and stuff as well but um, yeah that was that was super useful. No that, that's great because the, the, the good thing about what you mentioned there is it's very similar to uh, my time at uni so mm. like there's good similarities and that's key because then it means that there's at least there's a consistency throughout some of the universities um, I, can mm. under, I understand if you're tuning in, by the way, that um, we're obviously speaking about the the universities in the UK. Um, I understand. Yeah. Um, like this, the, the one thing I'm really hoping about this podcast is that I really hope there's lecturers and teachers uh, listening in. Like, that's my main um, focus. Like, that's who I'm trying to target in the sense that... Um, not in a bad way, so if you, if you are listening and you're a lecturer, I'm not, I'm not trying to hunt you guys down, so it's just like, like I'm just trying to get um, information yeah, the out there. Portrait. Yeah, exactly. Um, right, so I've got like a bunch of kind of random questions, like obviously like um, I've got like the four main questions that I sent you that I kind of base things around and stuff, but 
Um, is there anything that, like I know we kind of covered, but is there anything that that stands out to you? Maybe either like technical skills wise or um, um, soft skills wise, or anything that you think you wish you learned, but you've um, that you're still maybe trying to get better at. Like, is there anything that kind of like you know what I need to know that? Yeah. Art. <laughs> Art, just everything. Um, so, I, fun story actually, I wasn't allowed to do art at school. Um, I don't come from an art background, that's more my sister. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's, it, it's hard to describe it, but like, I come from a more kind of, um, I want to say like logic based way of thinking like I'm, I'm very much like my dad like okay. um like science math all of that like i kind of come from that even though i've got awful awful results at school no, no, that's <laughs> um, i understand where you're coming from but yeah I, I i got into art pretty late so i like going into uni i didn't know any of the art fundamentals like i i to this day i still can't do 2d okay um Although that's something that I'd, I'd love to learn at some point, um, but yeah, like color theory, um, that was something that I didn't really get down until ooh, like second half of second year again. Like, mm-hmm. I it, it's weird because I always found my work like jumping in quality in the summers okay like that was so weird to me because um as in it got better over the summer or uh like what what do you mean yeah yeah like 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 it just get better over the summer um so i kind of have my work you know for that academic year and it'd be fairly consistent like some improvements along the way and stuff but like obviously that's that's what you're hoping for right Mm -hmm. but then um like over the summer, like particularly the summer between second and third year, um, like the quality of my work just shot up, and that was mostly because I was kind of in zebrush a little bit more. So I did the Casper Stan foliage tutorial. Uh, can, can, can you see that? Oh, can you? See, are you okay to come towards more of the mic of that? <coughs> Excuse me. Not, yeah, not, yeah. Not, not trying to be rude. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. So you said, uh, can you mm. see the name of the course? Casper Stan okay. uh, on Gumroad. Uh, it's Karen Stanley. She's a artist from Ubisoft, Epic, and awesome. she's got she's got a uh, couple of PDF tutorials on Gumroad for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like a couple of substance materials. There's how to do like realistic foliage and that kind of thing, and you texture it all in Designer and that kind of thing. It's really really simple to follow. Um, but I did that as a basis, and then I basically spent like three months just making plants mm-hmm. um, no, that's, and that's then like though. just kind of from that I was like okay well this year I want to take as much of my stuff through ZBrush as I can mm-hmm. like, for example the throne room everything in that has been touched by ZBrush um, that by the way amazing piece like I, re- I really love it it's, it is really good Cheers, man. About two weeks before putting that up on Art Station, I was like hovering over the delete button. <laughs> <laughs> How come? Uh, I hit burnout. Um, oh right, okay, I, I about see. What you mean. March, April time. So like going out, going all out for like five years just caught up to me. Like for example, um, in my second year, my first semester, I I was work I was working part time uh, during like the first half. of university mm-hmm. and I was working part time I was doing 20 hours a day in the labs at uni by the way look after yourself yeah um but yeah so 20 hours a day in the labs and then I'd be driving 40 minutes there 40 minutes back I was getting on average for about 12 weeks straight I was getting like three four hours of sleep a night out yeah um so my body's still kind of recovering from that yeah um, and then, like this year, my health just plummeted, just as a result of like the last you know four or five years. Mm-hmm. Just because I I tend to tunnel vision quite a lot. Okay. So, like if I 
really want something like nothing stops me from getting it. I'm just kind of like blinkers on. That's what I'm doing. Full concentration, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm kind of stubborn as well. <laughs> so, um, like, if I'm working, I'll, I'll I'll be the first to admit that I forget to get up and get a drink of water, or mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go like an entire day without eating just because I just don't think about it. Yeah. Um, no, I'm glad you said that. It's more common than I, than I thought, or... especially like sitting in the labs and doing work and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was something I noticed really early on. It's scary as well because it's like, uh, not to trying to cut you off, but it's like when so I was the same as you, and like, like mm -hmm. it's I don't know, like I understand that so many artists, um, I guess obviously like we all want to do well, and, and we all understand that it's it's not an easy industry to get into. However, it's easy. Like this, this is where I kind of um, like I I know I'm a very like I'm a very kind of energetic sort of always positive kind of person. Um, <laughs> it's just who I am. Like uh, like like everybody's tuned tune in is like you're. Uh, for example, this morning, like what's my go-to music? So I was listening, so uh, there's one film I really like to. It's called Hitch. Have you ever seen it? It's Will Smith. It's like a robot. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's a guilty pleasure. Oh, so like my jam in the morning is like um, don't worry about things. So I was just like dancing to that in the morning. Like that's my kind of get my energy going. That's oh, what I kind of do. <laughs> one's one's either Motley Crue, uh, Kendrick Lamar, yeah. or Green Day, or NWA, or something like that. Just. My, my, I swear to God, my Spotify's got bipolar or something. <laughs> it, it, it goes from like the Lion King soundtrack straight into NWA. Dude, that's the same as me. It like, changes so much. <laughs> yeah, like I think I've had the same playlist now for well, ever since Spotify became a thing, really. And it's like just shy of like twenty-five hours worth of. If it's not broken, music. don't change it. In it, yeah. I just can't like. I'm I'm in the really nasty habit of like I'll add something to it and then I'll just kind of play the last section of my of my playlist. Mm -hmm. I'll just kind of repeat, you know, that you know, ten songs or whatever. Yeah. Um, and occasionally just stick it on shuffle, but yeah. And then you just start working away. Honestly, yeah, like. Um, no, that's the thing as well because it's it's the distraction part as well because it's like. Obviously, I know I've kind of got off tangent, tangent a wee bit, but but because like health is so important, and so many people, uh, mm. I don't know, it's just, I don't like, I'm not sure. So this is this is the only this is the one thing that I get a bit frustrated about when it comes to education. But I'm not, I don't think it's necessarily. So this is where coming back to your point earlier, do you know, like you were saying about like you were told about like the reality of um, like you have to work hard and stuff. So. Yep. My sort of whole sort of thought process about teaching is everything should be about enjoyment and pure just having a blast. Uh, but I understand that the reality is, is essential in the sense that in order for you to get anywhere, you just need that wake up call, in a, if you know what I mean. But I don't know if I was to like, if I had to teach things. So, for example, my sort of dream is to have my own school. Like, I have this. Um, everyone who's tuning in, Harry Potter. You know, I'm going to be making Hogwarts one day. Of your, like, that is my thing. I am building Hogwarts. I'm going to be the first person to build, build Hogwarts, and it's going to be epic. So, if you're like ten and you're listening, just so you know, in ten years' time, come and join Hogwarts. It's going to be ready for you in Scotland. And I just wish people had a more sort of like I. So I would love to teach. And this is why I do the podcast. But I wish people start teaching more as in a, an enjoyment sort of aspect instead of rather like... Like, I, I'm not saying people aren't doing this, but I wish it was more sort of like... Instead of saying, oh, you have to do this. Like, I understand that like, you have to say it, but it's like, it's how you come across saying it, if that makes sense. So it's like... Yeah, not everything has to be a numbers game. Yeah. Because it, it always feels like there's a kind of a... Like a checklist sort of mentality. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm right there with you on teaching. Like, I want to teach at some point as well. Um, like, when I first went to college back when I was 16, before I got into all the hairdressing and stuff like that, um, I was actually going to be an English teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so, I've, I've, like, at some point, I'd like to teach, whether that's, like, if I do a master's and I do it part-time, or... Um, you know, do something like what Moses St. Flair's done, you know, with uh, No More Grip. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, I recently bought that, and it's, that's nuts. For, like, 30 quid, that you can't get any better than that. Yeah. Um, so, 
maybe something like that or maybe working at a university or college or something like that just something where because even when I was in the labs like it wasn't uncommon because I so <clears throat> at Staffordshire University there's the um, Game Development Society okay. a mate of mine in uh, just a really really great guy um, he's called Lewis Thompson and he's currently an environment artist in Romania okay. uh, for Ubisoft epic uh, he's working on like, the Ghost Recon stuff and um, he founded the society with another mate of mine an awesome dude uh, Harry Wujush mm-hmm. we call him Wizzywig because he can't spell his last name Wizzywig um, awesome <laughs> uh, he's a uh, development artist at Rockstar in Edinburgh mm-hmm. uh, he worked on Red Dead and there was another dude uh, Rich Hill who's currently working at Q Games in Japan all three of them awesome dudes and uh, set up the society and in the first year so when they founded that in like January of my first year so about halfway through and had about 40 people in it and then I helped Lewis out with running it. I helped Lewis and Rich out, sorry, because Harry graduated. Um, this is the one that you were talking to me about the other day, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the member count actually shot up that September mm-hmm. to about 200. Wow, that's great. Um, we organized a trip to Eurogamer. We had guest speakers in, like Ryan Kingsley, and who we had over... Um, Excuse me. Over like uh, YouTube, like we hosted like a private, um, private call with them. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Shailene Hulbert, who's a freelance three D artist and very popular on Twitter. Um, she goes by UniDev. Okay. Uh, what's her name again? Sorry. Uh, her actual name is Shailene Hulbert. Um, Sh- Shailene Hulbert. Right. Okay. I'll have to check it. Um, by the way, as, as always, mate, are you okay to like share the links and stuff and names of uh, anything that comes up uh, comes to mind so I can put it there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course, man. Awesome. Um, we also had Jess Hyder from... At the time, she was at Epic Games. Now she's at Rare. Yeah, technical Jess creator. is amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, what, oh, who else did we have? We had, we had quite a few people. Uh, John Griffiths as well. John, another amazing guy. Yeah. I've had uh, both of them on the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on the podcast around the time that he came into into staffs. Actually, we've had him in twice. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's been fantastic. He's given me some really good feedback actually over, over the last year and a half. Um, we also had a Pinder Chigar. He's an uh, animator for TT Games. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a really sound sound dude as well. Um, yeah, we we. We've had all sorts, and we try. We tried to get as many different fields as possible because, like, even though the vast majority of the society was like artists, mm-hmm. we still tried to get animators in. Programmers are notoriously difficult to get in. I would agree. <laughs> um, and then, like, just organising all these talks, and we and we always made sure that it was it was free for for the members and stuff. But like, just having that alone helped me through university so much it goes a long way doesn't it yeah and because i was known from that quite a lot of people ended up coming up to us in uh, in class or the messaging on discord or whatever and they were like oh man how do you do this and like immediately i'd be like you know you do this 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 and this or if i didn't know then i'd find a tutorial that kind of explained it or something like that but you can always tell when someone just wants help for the sake of help, or they want help to better themselves. Yeah. So it's always it's, it's really hard, like trying to find like a a balance between the two. Yeah. No, like I, I'm no, that's super awesome. That you said that because uh, it was actually one of the things I wanted to talk about. So when mm. it when it comes to university, there's a lot of things that universities are great for. And so, for example, I was spoilt for choice. Um, by being surrounded by um, a lot of good sort of like side events and stuff. Um, so mm. I was the class, like, so we have a thing called like class rep. I assume you have the same thing maybe. So basically it's like 
So it's like the main voice of the class, if that makes sense, who like helps out with everyone sort of like, well, I'm not sure what it's like in England, but we have like a, so it's called class representative and uh, so the reason why, I, so I did it every year, so I did it in college as well. And uh, the, the main reason why I always applied for these things was to get involved. And there's like other things as well, like game jams and stuff. There's all these different things that you can um, put yourself out there and slowly kind of develop your brand, but most importantly develop, like you said, uh, a network and so, mm. so, like a foundation to kind of go by and naturally obviously through your practice and through your commitment you develop contacts outwards etc and it's these small things that even though maybe when you first starting off maybe you, uh, you're a rookie like for example when i started off i maybe i wasn't the greatest um communicator in the in the sense that uh, maybe like talking with people but f- through practice I obviously developed that sort of confidence that ability to to help and like you did the same thing so like you were giving people advice and um, obviously you were learning as you went along and there's a lot of things that I am I can understand of you're tuning in and uh, maybe you're uh, you're like oh that's not for me but until you d- um, acknowledge it until you actually give it a go y- um, you won't know and this is this is the main thing like um, it's the most cliche thing but like you just have to keep trying different things. Like trying different things is the best uh, best place to be because it shows that you're in your com- uh, you're not in your comfort zone anymore, and it's such a big part to just growing overall. And like for example, there's a lot of different things that I don't know that I'm still learning, but I always throw myself in that situation. And like for example, like there's um uh, like the common trend when I bring on a guest on the podcast is um, there's quite a lot of them saying that they're nervous uh, at the start. Like they'll say to me, "Oh, I'm I'm, I'm quite shy. There's a uh, there's there's so much pressure." And I'm like, the fact that you've just accepted it, like you got you've already got over the the main hump. If that makes sense, like the main sort of hurdle by just like, saying, "Oh, I'll do, I'll do it." If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I've been bricking it for like the last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry about it. No, uh, I've got. <laughs> I've got this um, this nasty habit of I, my mouth tends to get me into quite a lot of trouble. So there's, I don't really have a filter. Okay. <laughs> um, it's like, okay if you say anything. I can edit it. So <laughs> just be, obviously be smart with so, what you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, one of one of the funniest moments when my mouth got me into trouble was um, it was it wasn't bad or anything. Um, I'd like if it's if it's like in my head it's coming out my mouth right um, so, so i don't i don't like pause and take a breath or anything like that like quite a lot of the time mm-hmm. and, um being quite blunt and straightforward as well like as a person um it oh man it gets me into trouble but yeah. uh <laughs> no but you learn uh, from that as well though that's the main thing oh oh, oh sure uh like for example, I was at an academic roundtable um, at the end of my first year. This is when I was started to get involved with the Game Development Society, and I've got a mate at Codemasters that loves me for this. <laughs> but um, so at the table there was uh, there was a recruiter. I won't, I won't name him, but there was there was a recruiter from Playground Games. There was the Oliver Twins. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was someone from your university as well, mm-hmm. like a senior lecturer, and there was a couple of other lecturers, and then there was us, because um, we got invited because we were kind of like the only society for games at that point that wasn't like the video game society or something like that, mm-hmm. which was just focused on like esports and playing the games and stuff like that. And um, right before that academic round table, the Oliver Twins were doing a presentation on like their journey from coding like really basic games like back when the video game boom happened and, and all that to being like the first programmers at Codemasters and what they were working on then which was like Skylanders or something like that and uh, for some reason I was still thinking about Codemasters at the time and I'm sat right next to the dude from Playground <laughs> and, he's, and he's on about how at Derby University they had set the final year project for the students and when I was at college Playground Games did something similar for us like they just kind of like I I don't know if it was them as a company but it was someone from Playground Games 
the college had organized them to run like a little competition. And in my head, <laughs> I said, I said, uh, oh, you know, Playground Games did something similar at Derby College. Mm-hmm. Um, what came out was, oh, Codemasters did, did something similar at the time. And it was just kind of like, like you could hear a pin drop. <laughs> Uh, and he just kind of picked up his lanyard and pointed to it, just really casually, and was like, you know, "I'm I'm playground," because it's like that there's that rivalry between the two studios, isn't yeah. it? But uh, like, there was like, whoops, just ten, <laughs> ten seconds silence, and then it was like, "Oh God, what have I said?" <laughs> it's like, how, how, <laughs> how, "How you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm James." <laughs> no, but um, that, that's the thing, though, because like, that's the thing. Like, obviously, like I understand, like, uh, like obviously, you have to be smart with what you say, like. Uh, but oh. <laughs> you also have to be yourself. Like, so this is this is the balance between the two. Like, and this is a hard thing. Like, I understand. So the main thing, obviously, about the industry, you have to be very careful what you say and be smart, uh, just in general. And like, if you're new, like, it's and it's understandable. If uh, like, it's like, it's, like I always um, like the best type of person um, that I always like the most is when you just be yourself. Um, but I understand yeah. that. Like obviously, like, we all have our opinions, and opinions are important. And I, pe- I think a lot of people forget that. Um, like I understand, like we all have a voice. And like for example, like like I said to you at the start, um, like obviously you just graduated, and like a lot of people when it comes to the industry, the biggest mistake I think everyone has as a student is that they think that they're either their classmates' opinion doesn't matter, or they think people who are less skilled than them doesn't doesn't matter. And that's the compl- that's completely wrong. Every everyone's voice has yes, has something yes. to say. And um, like that's the thing. So uh, like, if someone does ever feel like, like for example, you're being in this situation, if they think that you saying that is a bad thing, then that's their mistake. Like I understand that. Mm. Like, I can understand that maybe like there's a rivalry and stuff. But like obviously when I do I do the podcast, I, I'm always like I have to take sides from everything, and I always think okay, I have to think smart of what I have to say. But I understand oh, that. Sure. But it's it's like it's it's so important to like just be you, like uh, so um I was watching um so I'm watching this film at the moment I've never seen it before it's uh, it's so funny so uh, have you ever seen uh, ever watched Zoolander? Yeah. So uh, I'm watching yeah. it's the first time I'm watching it right and it's so funny because like at the, at the start right so he's 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 <laughs> getting he's getting he's getting taught by the bears how to walk. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> no, no, but that's what that's what makes it great right so it, he's like getting, he's get he's uh, the guy's the main actor he's like. Right, so I need to impress this woman, and he's like, "Right, so you need to act like an alpha, and you have to be like the man." So like the the the, the, the bears are just in the zoo enclosure, and they're just like, "Right, raise your hands up in the air, and just start waving them." And he's just going like waving them like crazy, and he's just like, "Right, this guy is literally a man talking to bears," and there's like a, a crowd of kids just walking come around the corner, and they're like, "What on earth is this dude doing?" And it's just like it's so hilarious because it's like. The, like the, the big point I'm trying to get across from you guys, like, what, what was Ross about to say about this? But it's uh, it's just so funny because he literally's like, he's not being himself, and like, like that, that's the funny thing because like, for example, uh, everyone's tuning in. So I work um, in retail at the moment. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, Ross doesn't do 3D as a job yet, and uh, but like I'm still working on my craft to get where I want to go. And uh, like I said, I'm waiting for this sort of um, opportunity to hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, it happens. But we'll see what happens. But the main point I'm trying to get across is like. Like you just have to be you. So like, um, like you were saying like earlier about you seeing like polygons and like talking about three D. Like that's you yeah, being man. you, and it's like the most important part. And it, it, like that's like when it comes to the whole topic of being smart with what you say. Like that's obviously like, like obviously like the whole idea of online presence. Like be very careful with that sort of thing. That that's a very important aspect because it is a small industry. Um, yeah. right. So like, uh. You've actually said like um, so. One thing I would actually like maybe like to talk about. Like I understand. Uh, like obviously we've been talking for a while now, but uh, That's cool. w- one of the main things that I want to iterate is like daily habits. And <laughs> I, so we've we've both been the culprit of poor habits, and I'm pretty sure a lot of students are. But yeah. this is this would be the thing I wish so many uni started in, uh, implementing is. Like I understand it's not down for the uni, but um, so for example, when I was at uni, um, so I was going through a um, like I'm very open with everything. So I went through a very dark time because of uh, like kind of same as you in the sense that so I went through like a, like a mental break uh, point. So 
uh, I used to go to a psychologist because I was having a, a very dark sort of su- suicide uh, uh, moment in my university in the sense that I was really trying to, like, I was, like, the thing is, like, me, like, I'm always positive, so no matter what, if a negative thing comes up, like, I, I, like there's, like, just, like, another voice in my head, like, just always positive, but it does yeah, come a time, like, yeah, like, it's just, uh, like, I- like you'll be driving home and it's like that oncoming traffic lane is looking real tasty. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always the small things, it's it's always the random things. But usually closer to deadlines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, like... you start going berserk. You're just becoming like, like what's going on? Yeah. You know what I mean, I used to have long hair. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on now? Eh? <laughs> yeah, I just shaved it all off because uh, like the stress. And for me, it was like one less thing for me to stress about. Yeah. Is, like, I, used, I used to tie it up and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, <laughs> consistently for, like, the last three years, every single year I've grown my hair out to the point where I can, like, tie it back and, and all that. And um, every single time a deadline's come up, it's just, it's gone. <laughs> like, yeah. I've, I've just cut it off. <laughs> Get and out of the way. Of, well, yeah, because, like, you've got... Obviously, th- this is going to be worse for people that... That work part time as well when they when they're studying, mm-hmm. but because um, I, I particularly felt this in my first and second year. But if you're working part time and by going to university, at, at least in the UK, I don't know what it's like in Scotland or anywhere else, but mm-hmm. um, you are expected to outside of oh house phone's going. Um, Outside of university, like lecture time, you're expected to do like 90 hours of independent study a week. 90, right? Okay, she was right. So it it it's, it's something like that. Um, Wait, n- did you say 90? Yeah. So there's that, that can't be that can't be right because how many hours is there in a week? Um, is there like ni- 90 hours? She was right. Okay. Oh, not, not not 90 hours a week. Sorry, uh, nine hours a week per module. Oh so, right, okay, right, cool. um, okay. That sounds more. That sounds better. That sounds better. <laughs> had, had a brain fart. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> we all have them. Um, yes, it's, it's it's nine hours a week per module. Um, which, you know, if you're doing if you're doing four or five modules, then that racks up pretty quick. Yeah, that definitely um, hours. And then, but like, you always end up spending more than nine hours because you get caught up in doing what you're doing. And then, if you're working part time as well. Like, and then you've got you know friends and family on top of that, and it it like it builds up. And like I'll, I'll be first to admit, like there's a lot of my personal relationships that just don't exist anymore because of university, because mm-hmm. of doing course. So, because like you can you can go into doing like game dev and 3D or you know, game design or, or whatever your chosen field is, but you need to put the time in, yeah, and you need to prioritize. At, 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 at least, in my opinion, you need to kind of prioritize what matters to you. So I for agree. me, for me, it was okay. Well, I want this job. That is, is a really young kid. I always wanted to do, but I never thought that there was a future in it. Like at the time, mm-hmm. um, I was like. Right, I'm mid twenties now. I I need to I need to get on with my life and do what I want to do and do what I enjoy doing. And mm-hmm. I refuse to be miserable doing a job that I hate. Yeah. Because I worked retail um, when I was at uni. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked at the co-op. Awesome. Oh, I was on the tills all the time, man. Oh, I'm, I'm on the tills as well. No, but the, the great thing about tills is that uh, a lot of people are overlook, it might overlook it, but if you're tuning in it and you're working on the tills and stuff, it teaches you how to talk. And this is... This, 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 <laughs> it, obviously, obviously, it depends on the type of person you are, right? So I'm one of those people that... Uh, I say it every time on the podcast, but so I can talk to anyone like for, for as long as possible. It's just who I am. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the one thing that... It's so cliche, but there's so many people who don't know how to talk, and that's why I um, brought it up with Lincoln on the podcast. So, uh, if you haven't seen that one, that was uh, one of my favorite podcasts because it was very yeah, sort of. Uh, did you have a chance to listen to it yet? I'm not... Yeah, I've, I've I've listened to first half of it. Awesome. Um, I was listening to it last night actually. Because it was just uh, 
um, it was great to hear like his perspective on the whole idea. So I asked him like um, I don't think he expected, but I asked him right at the start like what was his thoughts on talking, and mm. so many people um, like for example, do you know if I was uh, if I was teaching at university right, and I would be like. Uh, do like everyone always does like the presentation thing so like the you have to do like, at least one presentation or a few presentations throughout your uh, your time studying what I would yeah. do it'd be like I would get everyone together in a room right and I would just be just like the type of person I am I would, like get everyone together and then slowly like like I don't know bring them out uh, like one by one and like do it in a way that's very sort of like instead of having like everyone like do you like uh, there, when you're in a lecture there tends to be like chair like the chair system like everyone's like stacked in chairs Whereas that that's kind of very daunting when like when it kind of when you're kind of doing it to an audience, whereas if you're doing it in a more sort of like social aspect, people begin to be themselves more. I'm not yeah, sure. see, a lot a lot of our lectures were in the actual computer labs. So, one of our labs is called the Epic Games Lab because mm -hmm. it's sponsored by Epic Games. Cool. And um, it's it's huge. Like you can there's a dividing wall that you can like unscrew and it folds back on itself but um that kind of cuts the room in half but if you're the, all right so the, the room is so long it's got four projector screens mm -hmm. um that's a, that's a really good system actually because no oh, oh, carry on sorry not trying to be rude it, it's, it's cool man. uh and then like you got like microphone speakers and, and all of that and um and like all the lectures were, well, as far as I'm aware, all the lectures were streamed. But I think like for like the distance students, but um, I don't know how often that happened. But um, like just being in that one room, I remember in Intro to 3D, that room was full. Mm -hmm. uh, there was close to, I'd I'd say that room could easily hold. At least a hundred students. Yeah. Um, at once, and that's like each one of them has a computer as well. Mm -hmm. So oh, right, okay, I, I thought you were just about to say it had like just the chairs and the and the projectors. Oh no no no. no. Um, like there's bit there's bigger labs than that, but um, that's definitely one of the biggest. And I've been at the front in that because we had the game dev weekly meetups in there. Like the game development society and like i just kind of be doing my work at the front just so that there's something on the screens and i just kind of have it up or whatever mm -hmm. have like uh that chill step remix or whatever you know the one with the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. on um just you know for like ambient sound or whatever yeah, yeah. but like, there's, there's, yeah there's been times where like i've been up at the front and i've done like a very quick walkthrough of how to do something. Um, my friend Lewis did it as well, actually. Um, in the second year, he taught the first year is how to create like, scrolls in 3ds Max, like just like bundled up scrolls. Mm -hmm. So it was literally just FFD, and then it was Bend. But um, that helped them out with their with their projects. And the first time you get up there, and you see like all of these people there. It was the most terrifying thing ever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, you've put yourself in that position. You kind of need to step up to the plate a little bit. Yeah. Without sounding too callous about it, like, you need to put yourself out there. You need to um, Try be it. approachable and, and and all that. Like, I like I like to think I'm I'm fairly easy to get on with and yeah, approachable and all that. Um, but I also know that. I'm a sarcastic bastard. <laughs> not, everyone, not everyone likes that. So, um, at least like, you're being yourself. Like if, if you, like if, yeah, if, yeah. Like, like if somebody you can can't always tell it. when someone's not being themselves. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and like, there's there were a couple of people um, that I've spoken to over the course of you know last five years that like. I don't know what it is, but you can always tell mm -hmm. when someone's not being themselves or not being entirely genuine. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I've, I've heard this, you know, be repeated by a couple of people from industry as well. And it's like, be yourself, but don't 
overcompensate anything that you think you're lacking. You're not lacking anything. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone wants to know who you are and what you can do and, and all of that. But if you think that you're, say you're lacking in some social skills mm -hmm. and you force yourself to come across as like really bubbly and excitable and, and all of that and pretty intense, like a lot of people can be like, Ooh, hang on a second, like that's a bit much. And it can kind of set, like put some people off. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just, just always be yourself and don't think that you have to make up anything that you think that you're miss you're not missing the thing. Like, yeah, no, I'm I'm super happy you said that because like, too many people I don't know, we all we all go through. It. I think it's because it's part of the growing stage through primary school and secondary school. It's like you're trying to, uh, a lot of people always try to fit in with certain people, and oh yeah, that was me, hundred like, percent. It's well, like we all we all we all do it. Like, uh, pe yeah. People are lying if they say they aren't. Like everyone always like has this sort of typical impression of like the perfect person, and th there's no such thing. Like nah. for example, with me going through secondary school, all I did was sport and go to graphic communication. Like every day, I was at graphic communication doing 3D, and I was always in there. If I wasn't in there, I was playing sport. It was simple as that, and I would not care what anyone said. Uh, like every day, like when I was in school, my dad would pick me up at, uh, like two hours after school, so I'd stay an extra two hours, and then I was arrived at school two hours before because all I wanted to do was those two things. So if anyone, even if it was my family, I would be like, I, I don't care what you think, I want it to be me. If you know what I mean. And oh man, I, I was so much the opposite of that. I was I was the little emo kid in the back corner. Really? Okay. Yeah, like that, that, uh, that's you. That's you. That's fine. Yeah, that was. Oh man, that was. That's some memories. Um, but it's a learning yeah, like, curve. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely there with you. Like, you gotta. There's no point in doing anything that you don't enjoy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, to, to some extent. Like, there's, you know, if if you enjoy killing people, don't do that. But um, you know, it. You should only ever aim to be yourself. Yep. Period. Like, there's no ifs or buts about it. Just be yourself. So, like, like obviously, like, carrying on like this this point, and just like to to like I guess summarize this whole podcast overall. So, mm. when it comes to like, uh, for example, like obviously we were talking about there about the presentation aspect. Um, so there's one thing that literally just came to my mind when you said uh, what you said. It was it was actually kind of random. I'm I'm not sure what your thoughts are on it. So. <laughs> Do you think people having like a microphone, like not like a, a, a thing to hold on to, but do you think like when you have like the earpiece and then as like the mic that kind of like wraps around, so it's I'm not sure what you call it, it's like a mouthpiece, like do you like the, the like mic, this. yeah, sort of like your head, like your headset, yeah, for like gaming and stuff, because obviously there's a lot of quiet, um, people are quite quiet when they're speaking and stuff. Do you think like that would be something new to introduce? Like, do you think that would be benefiting, or do you think that'd be more daunting because they hear their their voice? It's a bit. I know it's um, a bit of a random one, but it's just like something that came to my mind. No, it's it, it's fair, fair question. Um, it's hard to say because for me personally, I'm always really paranoid about because I I suffer with asthma. Mm -hmm. um, I actually really struggle to breathe in my nose. Okay. Because um, my sinuses and stuff like that, so. Uh, a lot of the time, I'm, I'm having to breathe through my mouth because I just can't get the air in. Mm -hmm. I'm always really paranoid about how loud that is. Right. So that's why I actually don't use the microphone on the headset because I'm paranoid about like that. You know that classic like breathing into the microphone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm dead paranoid about that. That's why I've got the desktop microphone. And um, for for some things, I can see how that would work, but for others. I don't think, like for me, I don't think that would work. Okay. Um, I like the desktop microphones, like with the pop shield and and all that. Um, for for some people, I know that it helps holding the microphone. Yeah, just like have some. Uh, yeah, like I, you probably noticed this, but I can't keep my hands still. Yeah, no, that's fine. We all, have, we all have a different way to relax. Um, I understand. I'm I'm too used to like typing. And like clicking on my mouse and, and stuff like that, um, but I, I I always found the the microphones at the desks for 
the lecturers. So the lecture stations in the labs mm -hmm. um, always had one of those 27-inch like, Cintiqs, usually a secondary monitor as well, um, and it had like a mounted microphone. Yeah, just like I a little, yeah, yeah. little thin one, little bit of felt on the top or whatever, uh, but they were super sensitive. Mm -hmm. So you, you could be sat all the way back here, and it'd be like you're talking like right in front of it. Um, and I noticed that, like, even even when the lecturers were like brand new, because we had like a bunch of lecturers come in in my second year. Um, even though like a lot of them had never taught before, in fact, I don't think any of them had. Immediately, they were like so much more relaxed because. One, they had both the hands free to work mm -hmm. while they were talking. And two, they could just kind of, it was almost like talking to themselves. But because of the microphone and all of that, like, everyone could hear. Yeah. Whether everyone was listening or not was a completely separate thing. Um, but that, that immediately kind of, like, put them all at ease so much more. No, that's awesome to hear because it's a bit of a random question I wanted to bring up. It's just because, like, Sorry? It, it was a bit of a random question for me to bring up, but it's like I wanted to like ask it just because it's like there's a lot of different ways for people to, like like you said, find their comfort zone, and a lot yeah. of obviously teachers, for example, they present themselves, uh, they do their presentations in different ways. For example, my common one is when I'm doing talks is uh, being in motion, as in walking back and forth, or like changing uh, changing my spot every f five ten minutes. That makes me feel so ill. <laughs> 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 it's, but that's the thing everyone's different everyone has their sort of thing and uh, like, like you said they just now use your hands a lot like I tend to like express like I'm doing it right now I'm just like waving my hands yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we have our, our thing that makes it easy for us so when you're doing presentations or whatever you're doing uh, like I said like we're talking about today and the main topic of today is being yourself it's it's so cliche like, like I bring it so many times up on the podcast but it's vital for me to highlight because until you acknowledge being yourself um, like things just escalate. You'll grow so much, and hundred um, percent. Yeah. And uh, by the way, man, I can't thank you enough for coming on. This has been an awesome podcast, and it's been great yeah, to get your perspective. Um, but like, like I said, everyone who's tuning in, um, if you guys have any questions for myself or for James, fire it down in the comments below. And once again, make sure to give them a follow. Everyone who's tuning in. Um, uh, so as you can see, follow button right now. Click it. Have you clicked it yet? Please click it. You know you want to click it. Make sure to sh sh share the love and uh, check Smash the guys' the work like out. Button. Smash the like button. <laughs> sub subscribe to the channel. You know how it works. It'll be super Click cool. <laughs> so uh, thanks, everyone, who's tuning in. Oh, by the way, make sure to select the no notification bell. That's the other one I almost forgot to be notified every single week. And till next time, folks, we will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.